this out. Okay. Um, well, that just reminds me of another story that I personally encountered, right? Uh, you know, in, in Singapore, Chinese New Year is just when most Chinese celebrates and, you know, we will buy goods and all that. So, as usual, I queue up at one of the local uh, popular supermarket called NTUC, one of the branches there. And all the branches are basically the same. And uh, NTUC uh, implemented at, at that time, uh, uh, sometime last year, last uh, Chinese New Year, uh, the DIY system. The DIY system basically means that the customer will queue up and they will self-check and they will make payment, they will pack themselves and then they will go. So that saves the supermarket a lot of uh, costs in terms of having human server. Now it's just machines, machine server. They are patients, they are accurate and the labor is done by the customers themselves. And it's aligned interest because uh, NTUC wants you to finish up your purchase and go out so that other customers can continue and use the machines and buy things. You are also dying to get out, right? Because you don't want to be queuing up and then uh, fumbling with your cards and so on. So it's a line interest. You want to check out quickly and uh, NTUC wants you to finish up your purchase quickly as well. That's good. Interestingly, NTUC implemented the DIY as a parallel almost like this almost as what you see in this slide so customers can choose do you want people to serve you then you go back to the usual k times mm1 or you want to do it yourself in that case you join this mmk and their mmk uh kind of as an internal standard they have four machines right so it's s1 to s4 but let's for the sake of discussion just say that they, there are three machines so that we can see it here so there are three machines for us to use and you stand in line Okay, now when I was there uh, physically in that in that shop, I saw a lot a lot of people. So I bought this whole basket of goods, goodies and stuff. Uh, so it was heavy. I was frustrated, and then it's kind of stuffy. And it was way before COVID nineteen, and it was like a lot of people. It just irks me into wanting to get out as soon as possible. So much like many other people, I was trying to you know giraffe around to see if. Uh, there is any shorter queue. The often misconception is shorter means quicker, right? Shorter means quicker. And that's not really true. So, but I do know that theoretically, MMK wins out K times MM1, right? So what happens to me was, it's, it's kind of uh, cute and interesting in that there was this old couple uh, and they also were, were about just finishing their purchase together with me. So we were like a bit competing uh, as to who can spot the shorter queue first and then quickly run there to take the spot, right? So they were looking around. They were at first uh, looking at the very long and snaky uh, kind of queue for the MMK system. All right, so it was very long and it kind of wrapped around the corner in an L-shaped form. It was like endless as far as eyes can tell. And the rest are kind of filled with people also looking long. But of course, individually, they don't look as long as this long L-shaped queue, you see. One eyeball, you can tell that there are more people here than number of people in one queue system. That's true. So at first, the couple queued up in the MMK, the, the DIY. Then they were saying, wow, it was taking so long. Then they gave up and they walked around. I, can, I was looking at them, uh, seeing how their decisions were. And then uh, they were looking around, trying to eyeball. And then they saw one of the lanes, thinking that that was their optimal position. So they, they queued up there, right? And I teach this stuff, right? If I join them, then uh, it, I'm not practicing what I'm teaching. And then why am I uh, trying to convince you here? So I teach this stuff, given all this limited information about how fast the queues are moving and all that, I all I can rely on is my understanding of the theory and having a bit of faith in that. Because all my senses tell me, just like what it told the old couple, was that the DIY queue, the MM3 queue, was very long, was like way longer, maybe twice as long as each of the uh, K by MM1 queue served by humans, okay? So my senses all tell me instinctively go to the single server system, 
but that goes against my teaching, my understanding. So with a bit of leap of faith, I just blindly go along with my uh, theoretical teaching and uh, I queue up here. So that's me. And this is the old couple. Right? So I started off like looking like a loser because I was already way back in the queue. And then uh, as what my understanding of the theory told me, kind of surprising, but not surprisingly, because surprising and, and maybe in an in a interesting way is that the queue started to move pretty quickly. So before long, I was already around the corner. All right, very, very, uh, it, it kind of, it's not super fast, but it does move. Whereas the other queues are like hardly moving. So before long, I was already around the corner and then very soon, uh, still feels a bit frustratingly long, but very soon it was my turn and I get to uh, queue up and clear my basket of payments and then out. All right. Not so much as a revenge, but as a verification, I look back and unfortunately the old couples were still like midway through after I've gone through my payments, right? So indeed it is uh, quite a, a vindication, right? Of the theory that uh, MMK always wins, always wins. And you need to just have that faith because your senses will be telling you the wrong thing. Okay, so that's personal experience sharing and, and this being so real and I'm much more convinced uh, when I tell you that MMK wins out. K times MM1 all the time. And without going through the mathematics, it may not sound very convincing because even though I tell you the story, after all, it's my story, right? Uh, but let's just do a very simple simulation. Okay, very simple simulation. Nothing very fantastic just uh, a quick few icons to fill up the servers. So we're going to keep the three servers busy. Okay. And we have um, some customers queue up. So let's just put one, two here, one here, and uh, one, one, two here. Sorry, I can't draw very well, but you get the idea. These are all customers queue up. We have two, one, and let's say three. Okay. So three in one. So at this moment, if we take a snapshot, all three servers are busy. Yep. Okay. So now momentarily, uh, this customer is cleared. S2 has just finished. S2 has just finished. And we are going to uh, serve this customer, right? So this customer moves up. All right. And then uh, because S1 and S3 guys, well, we can clear them. We can clear them. All right. So uh, they also cleared one. So we start from here. Now S2 has finished. Now S2 has finished. What happens? What happens next? What happens next? Well, we can see that S2 is supposed to serve the next customer, but because no, no customer, number one, no customer is in the queue. Number two, customers are not supposed to renege from their queue and join another queue. Not supposed to, right? Because that's the theoretical assumption. Um, in practice, what this means is that there are railings that guide the, the customers in towards cashier one and typically you cannot come out easily, you are like in the queue, right? Or uh, in practice also, it is possible that if, uh, if, if S2 cashier is nice, uh, she may call out, next, uh, can you come over? And then the, of course this guy who responds f faster or, or quicker will uh, jump the queue and go over to S2. But that's because S2 is being nice. And as a queue system owner, you don't want to depend on the server to be extravagantly nice, right? Yeah, you want the server to work fast, but you don't want the server to be doing some non-standard, uh, uninstructed kind of uh, exception handling like that. So, so we cannot, you know, as a sustainable way, depend on S2 saying, hey, you know, I'm available, come here, come. That's not the right way. So what will, what will happen next? Nothing. All right, not, nothing. Number one, I, S2 will idle, all right? And all these remaining three customers are going to be very frustrated. So in other words, it's a lose-lose case because the queue system owner 
will pay S2 to idle and its customers will be complaining. They don't like it, right? So customers are not happy, Q system owner not happy.